TF2 has a lot of bad weapons, but I believe some weapons are simply misunderstood. Take the loose cannon for example. On one hand, it's pretty inconsistent and not very easy to use, but on the other hand... Oh, it's about to go crazy! Boom! These guys are so dead! The double double tug! But let's take a step back. I'm gonna take five of TF2's most controversial gimmick weapons and put them to the test to find out if I can harness their power or if they really are useless. I can't deal with this thing. Starting off with the loose cannon, I was feeling pretty confident that I'd be able to really show off this weapon's potential. All I have to do is charge it up and double donk. Oh, I missed it. <clears throat> uh, just charge it up and double donk. Oh no. Oh my god, I can't hit him, please. Just charge it up and double donk. Can I donk the heavy off the cliff, maybe? Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> what? Third time's a charm. If you don't know, the loose cannon has a mechanic called the double donk, which occurs when your cannonball bounces off an enemy and then explodes to hit them again. The biggest problem I faced while using the loose cannon was treating it just like the stock grenade launcher. I kept getting too close to enemies, panicking, and then spamming grenades until eventually... I hate this weapon. The charge time before shooting means you generally have to be a lot more careful when choosing your shots, which is something that I am not very good at. Dude, I cannot, I'm so bad with this thing. And if someone has more than 125 health, you're not gonna one-shot them. Like, what, why, why did I think that was a good idea? Once you can get used to the unique playstyle that this weapon offers, you can begin to experience one of the most satisfying things in TF2. Oh! <laughs> I know there's a pyro up here. Okay, come here! Oh! <laughs> oh, hello, Scout. Bye-bye. Oh, the heavy too? Heavy? Heavy? Okay. Okay, I'm gonna ham the medic. Come here. Oh my god. The huge long-range donk. Got him. Oh, Trollter. What? Okay, I got scammed on that one. Yo, wait, what the hell? What? And though this weapon takes a little bit of getting used to, I think it's safe to say that the loose cannon is more than just a useless gimmick. That said, I would not recommend it over the stock if you actually want to win your games. Moving on to the Huntsman, or as you may know it, the Luxman. This silly little bow and arrow is notorious for having the dumbest hitbox in the game, which often leads to a lot of skillful interactions. I've played a good amount of traditional sniper over the years, so it took me a while to adapt to the more aggressive playstyle that the Huntsman lends itself to. But there was one trick I learned that really helped me push my Huntsman gameplay to the next level. Taunt kills. <laughs> no way! The Huntsman has arguably the best taunt kill in the game because of just how fast it is. Take this scout for example. I decide I'm not good enough to try to shoot at him, so I just walk around the corner and press the funny button. <laughs> That was crazy, there's no way. The Huntsman taunt kill is like actually viable, dude. This strategy can be surprisingly effective, but unfortunately, you are always at risk of having your fun ripped right out of your hands. Wait, you ready? Oh, oh! No! <laughs> Another great thing about the Huntsman is that you don't even have to see the person you're trying to kill. What the f <laughs> what? We've all played against those 15,000 hour hail zone sniper mains, but the only thing scarier is the free to play Gibbous sniper getting cross map kills on players he didn't even know existed. The learning curve for this weapon is also pretty low, as it actually requires you to think less about what you're doing compared to a normal sniper rifle. What? Simply turning my brain off and making stupidly aggressive plays actually allowed me to get some pretty cool kills. What? <laughs> this is so easy! And you know, sometimes with this weapon, you just need to think, why not go for this shot? <laughs> yep, I deserve that. And with a skill floor so low it's practically in hell, the Huntsman is far from useless. Coming up next, we've got the Beggar's Bazooka. This weapon has always been a mystery to me, and I'm sure we've all seen those insane movement videos from people using this weapon to just fly across the map for some crazy montage clips. Oh my god! Ah! I have never really been able to replicate that. Oh my god, this is the one. This is it! 
Oh, please, please, please. Uh. Before trying to learn the movement techniques, I decided to warm up my skills by using the Beggar's Bazooka in the most brainless map possible. Dust Bowl. Oh, and this is Knuckle. He got me into TF2 way back in 2014, and he's here to make sure I don't have fun. Or at least, that's what he tried to do. Oh hey guys! <laughs> no, are you kidding me? I just walk forward, I just walk forward. I'm the best, I'm the best player, I can walk forward. And unfortunately for him, all the medics on my team just really wanted to keep Ubering me. No, no, no! Hey! Oh so yes. Pocket medic guy, you shut up. You don't like Oh hey, yes. Look at me. I'm such a good gamer I am. Body shot. I have the off. No. No. Oh, I got Uber. Run at me. Run. Fear me. If I don't kill you, I'm doing like 20 push-ups right now. <laughs> 20 push-ups? Okay. Push you wouldn't run. You wouldn't do that. Fuck. No. Get, get get on the floor. <laughs> Start doing your push-ups. When I said I kept getting Ubered, I seriously meant it. Oh no. Okay. It's okay. Oh, I got Ubered because I was low on health. I wasn't Why even in the fight. Get, <laughs> Why wouldn't I get Ubered? Yeah, like, I, I wasn't like, even- Why wouldn't he just get a random crit too on me? Yeah. With all the pocket medics and random crits, we decided there was only one fair way to settle this. <laughs> it didn't even show up. I won though. I won though. Now that I'm a little more used to this weapon, I feel like I actually have to start learning how to use it properly. But where do I start? Do you want to give yourself a little introduction? Oh, fuck. That's like the first time anyone ever asked me that. <laughs> um, God, I don't even know. Uh... This is Cream. He's an Australian YouTuber who you may know from videos such as these. And he's also really good with the Beggar's Bazooka. I asked him to teach me some common rollouts and jumps in hopes that I could finally master this weapon. Whoa! That is yeah. sick. So that's like the All wall sink, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah. The second, the second you shoot the second rocket, release like the other one. Okay. Oh shit. I had struggled to do this jump for quite a while until finally I managed to do this. Yeah. Okay, okay! Nice. Okay. He taught me a couple more jumps around the map until I finally felt ready to hop into a real game. No! <laughs> to nobody's surprise, these jumps are a lot harder to do when there are 12 enemy gamers trying to kill you. I should have tried to market garden him! God fucking damn it, I didn't expect I was gonna. Oh. Out of all my fails, I think this one is probably the most painful clip of them all. No! Sorry. <laughs> but after so many painful failed attempts, I finally managed to have a couple cool moments with this weapon. Yes! Oh my god. This little rollout became my new favorite jump because it was easy to do and consistently set me up with a clean market garden. Unfortunately, I wasn't good enough to consistently pull off the wall sink jump that Cream taught me, but overloading did just fine here. <laughs> I think it's safe to say that the Beggar's Bazooka has some insane power, and whether or not I can harness it, it has proved to be a useful side grade. <sighs> what was that? Hello? Must have just been a nightmare. No! No, not you again! I can't do it! Just leave me alone! Why? I'm not even that bad. The Classic is one of the weirdest weapons in TF2. If you aren't aware, it allows you to charge your rifle while unscoped, but only allows you to hit headshots when the rifle is fully charged. This means your gameplay basically looks like... I'm, I'm, I'm coming! I'm coming! You watch out! Uh, oh, shit. It can be pretty boring to use sometimes, but insta-killing any class from across the map has no right to be as stupidly satisfying as it is. <laughs> 
In terms of efficiency, the Classic is effectively a straight downgrade to the stock sniper rifle, but it does have a niche use of making it a lot easier to bully any rocket or sticky jumpers. Unlike the Huntsman, the Classic gets stronger the farther away from your opponents you are. Most of the time using this weapon, the players I'm shooting at are so tiny on the screen, it kind of just feels like I'm swatting flies. If you do want to get more aggressive, it helps to abuse flank routes and hide in unexpected places. And shout out to this pyro for accidentally showing me the craziest flank route that I've ever seen. Wait, can you seriously do that? Oh my god! <laughs> Fuck the objective. Fuck the classic. This jump. <gasps> oh my god. I hate to say it, but after playing with this thing for a little bit and getting used to it, I genuinely did start to enjoy it. Ooh, why am I actually having fun? <laughs> but as much as I had a fun time using the classic, I would have a hard time calling it useful in comparison to literally any other sniper rifle. Sorry. Last and probably also least, the Fan O War. The only time I ever use this thing is an MVM, so I'm trying to do like my whole my whole man vs machine loadout, but I don't think it's going to go very well. Right off the bat, there seemed to be only one viable way to utilize this weapon. I think the only time this thing is useful is if I can get in on a heavy who's just sitting on the cart, so I might be able to, or, or right here actually. Can I? Okay, see that was actually useful. You could argue that I probably wasn't using the fan optimally. But especially as a Force of Nature user, it seemed like it always would have been more efficient to just walk up and shoot the enemy instead. <laughs> the Fan of War was so useless there. Like, it was. I, I guess it helped do damage, but like, why would I not have just shot him? It did not feel great to use, and I would even say this weapon was actively hindering me when I needed a melee weapon because of the massive damage reduction. Come here. Shit, dude, I can't. Another issue I faced is I often forced myself to use or completely forgot to use both the fan or the mad milk in combat. Oh my god, please. Oh, I had milk. Wait, I can milk myself. Fuck. Don't take that out of context. The game was going about as I expected until I decided to demonstrate my extremely high skill movement with the force of nature. <gasps> no, but I'm requeuing. Yeah, after that one, I decided I was never going to play Upward again, so uh, now we're on Swegen. Going into Swegen. I'm going to go, 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 go into Swegen. Yeah, this is the one. This is the target. I didn't milk him, but... Okay, he's AFK. <laughs> I didn't even kill him still. Is it even fair to call the Fan of War bad if this is the person using it? Like, come on. Unfortunately, I'm still not convinced that this weapon has ever helped me get a kill that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise. And for that, I am going to have to say this weapon is useless. Alright guys, I think that's all we have time for today. Thanks for checking out the video. Uh, oh wait, are we doing an outro? <laughs> <laughs>